Hello, hello again. Welcome to another episode of Alpha Bravo Pinball. Tonight we have uh, the exciting conclusion of the Metallica shop job. Uh, we started on Sunday night, and I started by tearing down the game, uh, laying out parts uh, on the floor in sequence. And uh, yeah, we're uh, we're going to continue tonight. Hopefully, put it all back together. Hopefully, I can uh, figure out the uh, <laughs> the uh, the way to put it back together. Um, I, I'm gonna I'm gonna admit this is a little bit of a uh, a cooking show. I'm gonna put a little bit uh, pull a little bit of a cooking show uh, um, technique for you here. Um, there are some some tedious bits that I did last night uh, while you weren't watching, just because they would be very um, repetitive and uninteresting to watch on camera. One could argue this entire show is uninteresting. But uh, at least this part here, uh, I think there would be no argument is, uh, is uninteresting. So um, what I did in particular, above the pop bumpers, there are some lane dividers which are uh, red plastic. Uh, I simply took those out and replaced the rubbers on those and put them back in. Very repetitive, very uninteresting like I said. So we're going to take it from here. Uh, we're going to start uh, replacing some rubbers. Uh, first of all, I have these, these Titan clear rings which I'm going to be using um, to replace the, uh, the black ones that are on here now. Um, and then uh, we're going to do some waxing and, uh, and then we're going to reassemble. So yeah, let's get started See uh, see how it goes. Hope you're having a good night. Uh, stick around and uh, let's see if we can get this game playing by the end of the night. Alrighty, so first thing I'm going to do, um, maybe I'll start with the wax in case I don't want to get any wax on my uh, on my new rubbers so before I replace those I will go to the wax my product of choice is uh, blitz one grand uh, this is the the pin side recommendation of choice and uh, I found it works really well some other waxes have a lot of chemicals in them and you can tell because as the moment you open the can it's just got this incredibly strong odor to it uh, this stuff doesn't smell too much um, which, which is great because if you're, you know, you're indoors, you're inside your house, right? You don't want to, if this is a product that's meant for cars, doing it outdoors in the garage or whatnot, uh, if you're doing it inside your house, you don't want to stick, stick, uh, stink up your, your room with chemical odors. So Blitz One Grand, totally recommend it. It's, uh, it's good stuff. The can is really, really tight. I guess they don't want it drying out. Uh, if it dries out, you, it's much more difficult to apply, of course. So it comes in this uh, very solid paste. Uh, I'm going to use a clean rag. And let's get started. The uh, the the adage, uh, the old uh, you know saying goes, with wax more is less. I can't tell you the number of games I've bought over the the years where um, the game the game is caked in wax, uh, wax residue. Um, just from applying too much wax, it gets everywhere on the posts, etc. And it's a real pain in the butt to clean. So highly recommend just using a little bit and uh, and going from there. Uh, you don't need a lot. It's gonna like you know. I've just been rubbing down the play field gently, and it's uh, it's not coming off the towel that easily. So, um, it's it's a it's a relatively hard uh, product. It's not like a cream or anything. It very much is a, a hard paste. So, you just kind of rub it over and over. Always use a clean cloth, of course. Like I talked about the other night, when you're cleaning, uh, if you have any uh, residue, grit, uh, anything like that in your cloth you're just going to be rubbing scratches into your play fill. It's going to act like a sandpaper. So you want to make sure you're using a clean cloth. Um, if you're out there, uh, by all means, if you have any questions about uh, working on games, shopping games, uh, feel free to join the chat uh, just to say hello or to ask any questions, uh, to wish me luck putting this thing back, uh, back uh, into one piece. Not going to lie, there's a part of me that uh, was afraid doing this live that uh, I will look stupid on camera wondering like where a part goes uh, that's always you know it almost always happens you're putting a game back together and you're gonna spend some time just looking around like where does this go but uh, you know I've never not been able to put a game back together again so um, you know there, there's definitely extra pressure on camera uh, but uh, let's see what happens you'll be right there with me if uh, if I succeed or fail we'll do it together and uh, maybe if I don't know where a part goes, you can uh, you can chime in on the chat and it goes on the left or, or whatever the case may be. So, got. I'm just going to focus on the uh, the main part of the playfield now. And uh, you know, I'm not one of those people that puts wax everywhere. Some people do it on the ramps. They do it on every single 
lane where the ball can end up. I, I just basically do it. I think the main benefit is uh, is in the main, uh, just above the flippers where when you launch the ball. Um, but you certainly can if you want. Just be careful again about getting uh, too much too much wax everywhere. And uh, that's how you do it. So you're uh, if you're not familiar with with wax, you're gonna it's a two step process to apply it. First step is to, to rub it in on the play field, try to get it as evenly and uh, everywhere you can. You're gonna then let it dry, and uh, after it's dry, we're gonna buff it off. So maybe while we let it dry, I'll do, I'll do some rubbers. Got a good amount here. I don't see the need to go overboard. Certainly you can always apply another coat on the, the main area of the game here is, is totally accessible, even with the game fully assembled, so there's no problem doing another coat later. The, pl the places you won't be able to get to are like the, the graveyard here um, and you know the areas under the well. <laughs> no point in waxing underneath the ramp, the ball's never going to get there. Uh, but the lanes back here of course are, are near, near impossible to access uh, once the game is back together. Alrighty, so I've got some wax there. There's none left. There's just a little bit left on my towel so I'm just going to keep applying until uh, it's all gone from the towel. Hope everyone is doing well, staying safe. Glad you're able to uh, to join tonight. All right. Okay, so that's good for now. I'm going to seal this. It, I mean, it, it's a uh, the Blitz One Grand uh, compared to other waxes I've used does not smell too bad. It's certainly not odorless though, <laughs> so I'm gonna go ahead and, and reseal this can before the odor gets uh, any more in the room. All right, so that's that. Now we can go ahead and replace some rubbers. Uh, so the first thing I wanna point out is the manual. So the manual um, has a chart, which I have bookmarked here, um, showing all of the different uh, rubbers in the game and where they are. So on the on the left side here, you've got all the different dimensions, uh, ha along with a handy chart for actually measuring your rubbers. Uh, you can place them down on the paper if you if you don't know which is which. And then on the right side is kind of a map of the playfield. I just want to give you a word of caution that this uh, this is more or less accurate. Um, you know, it's, it's certainly a good reference, and I encourage you to look at it. But there's um, there's definitely rubbers used in the game that are not indicated on this map, so uh, just keep that in mind. I had a problem, uh, I have a problem I know with the order that I put in. Um, my order did not include, it's my fault, uh, these, uh, these 7 sixteenths, which are these tiny little guys. There's two different sizes of, of small little rubbers. Uh, and uh, and these are measured by outer di diameter because they're so small and my order did not include these in clear so I'm gonna have no choice but to use white ones until I can get some uh, some clear ones in the mail all right so let's start with perhaps the most important ones the the slings and uh, you can see these slings were I don't know how well you can see that on the camera uh, but they're falling apart they're almost split all the way through if you can see that so those were, were definitely due. And uh, now, of course, that the game is disassembled, it's a trivial task to replace them. And so it, it's nice to do them uh, all at once. And I believe those are two and a half. Now, your, your flipper rings will actually say, if you, you need like laser eyesight to be able to read it. This is a two and a quarter. So I'm gonna try to find one notch bigger than that, for two and a half. So it says tighten on one side and then on the other. That just says two. But of course, this is bigger than the two and one quarter. So am I not seeing the half? Hmm. Let's try another one. So that is bigger still, and that's. That says two and a quarter. There's. Clearly something that I'm not getting here. Aha! Can I not read? That definitely looks like it says two and a quarter. 
And so does this. Explain yourself, Titan. Explain yourself. Someone message Titan and uh, <laughs> ask him to join the chat because they both say two, and this says two. So I'm inclined to believe this one is wrong. The, both of these say, uh, if you can see, both of these say two and a quarter on them. This one says two. This is slightly smaller than that, so I believe that those are correct. That can't be two. Uh, I just finished saying how there's a chart in the manual with the different rubber sizes. So let's see if we can put them here. Uh, so there's two charts, one for um, halves and one for quarters. So I was saying this one was marked two and a quarter, this one is marked two. Yeah, so that's clearly a two. You can see it fits exactly on there. And that should be a two and a quarter. Sure enough, fits exactly on there. So this one, the uh, the marking on it is bogus. It's gotta be. Yeah, this is one and three quarters, sure enough. Don't trust the uh, indication on these things because they will lead you astray. Um, that's my conclusion. This is the first time I've seen this happen. Uh, the marking on the rubber being wrong. Um, am I getting this game ready to sell? Thanks for the question, Holly. Uh, no, this game is not leaving. It's one of my favorites. Uh, there's another two and a quarter. And this should be a two and a half, which is barely visible. Let's check to see which rubber is called out in the manual. Bear with me one more second. The manual says it's a four, four is two. That also, I imagine, can't be right. Um, I'm going to use two and a halfs because I know that two's snapped, uh, and that's what's in my kit anyway, is two and a half. All right. You don't necessarily have to uh, follow the manual exactly, exactly. Uh, this is pinball, and uh, you just do what feels right to you. Uh, and, I, and I have a selection including two. Oh, that's a little loose. Maybe I should use the two and a quarters, because those feel a little bit too loose. Got to have the Goldilocks one, not too tight, not too loose. Yeah, two and a quarter works. There were there was a two here before, and it was definitely over tight, and, and that's part of the reason why it failed. So I'm gonna go one size bigger with two and a quarter. All right. So now we have those done, and uh, let's go to the next one, which is over here. Hey everything, uh, have you ever seen an issue where the snakes will stump sometimes spit the ball out into the side of the hammer on this game? No, actually, uh, and you're, are you talking about a premium or uh, a pro, premium LE or pro? Because I know the snake is different on the pro. The difference is on the premium LE, the jaw of the snake uh, moves up and down, whereas on the pro it's fixed. So I'd be curious to hear if you're having a problem on a pro or, or a premium LE. This is a premium, premium LE with a moving jaw. The main difference I have found between the two games, playing them of course, is the, uh, the shot is just easier to make on the pro uh, for you know, the, the moving jaw, just that, the, the, the way that it's shaped and stuff that, that make, tends to make the shot a little bit harder. But this game, I have to say, has been nothing but reliable for me. Uh, it is an early run game. Um, you can't see the back box on the camera right now, but it's the old style uh, metal, uh, sorry, non-metal wood back box. Uh, so it's an early run game, uh, but still it's, it's been just fantastic. Uh, I haven't had any problems with any of the mechanisms, including the snake. Uh, probably the best thing to do is to record a slow-mo video if you haven't already, and maybe I'm just telling you something you already know and I'm being unhelpful, but uh, try to record a, a slow-mo video. You know, I, I know the iPhone, I, I can't speak about Android phones, but uh, and, uh, iPhones now have a high-speed mode to the camera where you can uh, record 
high frame rate video and it's super uh, with a slow mo function. It's super super helpful for diagnosing uh, things like that because at at full speed you really just can't see what's going on. Uh, but maybe that'll they'll help you. Oh yeah, that's right. There is the, your uh, I I apologize. You're totally right. There is no hammer on the pro. Uh, I always forget about that. Uh, it's easy to forget about games uh, you don't own, of course, but I, I have played it, but uh, yeah, there's no hammer. The hammer is big. I know there's mods where, um, you know, people complain that it gets in the way. I kind of agree, uh, actually, that uh, it hinders your visibility a little bit. The reality is you know where to make the shot. Like, you know what's a shot on Sparky and what's not, uh, whether it's going to hit the, the little cube behind it. So I'm not sure in practice how much of a difference the, the hindrance of visibility makes. It's almost more like a, a psychological effect than anything else. That said, if there was a nice uh, smaller hammer out there that I could buy, uh, I know Oric was making them for a while on Pinside, but is not anymore. I would probably buy one. Uh, you have a slow-mo video of it, huh? Yeah, that's tough. Um, the ball seems to come out of the snake high and bounce right off the hammer. Yeah, um, yeah, interesting. Well, let's see if anyone else joins the uh, the chat. Uh, you know, I just started streaming tonight. Uh, maybe we'll get some more participation a little bit later, and uh, we can check in uh, with uh, the wisdom of the room to see if uh, anyone has seen that problem. Uh, it's good to know, though, something to look out for uh, for me as an owner and for for anyone else out there with the game. All right, so now I've been chatting for a while, and my wax, which I put on uh, before, has got to be dry now. So now's where you get another clean uh, cloth, and you can buff it down. This is the satisfying part, of course, because it really brings the, the shine out. It's, it's just like doing it on a car. Uh, you just get the, the pleasure and satisfaction of, of seeing, it, seeing it turn all shiny and slick and nice. Uh, when you when you do the buffing after the uh, the initial wax, so we're just gonna go ahead and do that. Um, glad to hear that you're enjoying the stream. Uh, this is an experiment uh, for sure. I don't know how many people are are streaming, uh, doing work on games on Twitch. I know people, plenty of people are are doing uh, playing, which is what I started doing. I started streaming. Uh, it's been a, almost exactly a month now. Uh, you know, a few weeks into the uh, shelter in place. Uh, we're coming to you live here from San Jose, California, and uh, our county, Santa Clara County, was one of the first in the country to issue a shelter in place. So uh, we're, we're, we're used to it by now, for better or worse. And uh, I started streaming then to, uh, to kind of in place of uh, pinball nights with friends. And uh, so I've done some, some nights playing my different games in the game room. And uh, decided, uh, you know, my, my website, if you go to abpinball.com, is not focused on playing, it's very much focused on, on working on games and, and, and restoring them, fixing them, things like that. Um, so I figured why not do a tech video uh, instead, doing it live, taking a bit of a risk that I lay, look like an idiot not knowing where how to put it back together. Uh, but uh, you know, so far, so good. And I have to say, out of all of the games I've, uh, I've shopped out like this, um, Metallica is a pretty simple one, to be honest. There's just there's not a whole lot of parts to it, and, and everything is easily accessible. Um, you know, there are some games where it's just sandwiches of many, many layers of stuff, one layer upon another. Um, and uh, you know, if you, you you either have to take pictures or have good memory or have a good system uh, for for putting it back together, this isn't really one of those games that I mean. Maybe I should wait until the end of the stream to say this that that it's easy because I'm not there yet It's still all in parts on the floor uh, But uh, anyway my impression taking it apart was uh, you know, it didn't take that long even with uh, You know doing a lot of chatting during the stream um, I was able to to uh, you know to get it all the way down to uh, to uh, shop out so uh, hopefully this is only a two-parter. Uh, this being the you know part two of two, I'm, I'm sh I sure hope that by the end of the night, uh, I don't like have to to walk back on that statement and say, well, we'll see you in part three because we failed to put it back together. Uh, but I'm I'm pretty confident. If you want to see, I'll give you a behind-the-scenes look of my uh, system on the floor. If I switch to my camera view here, I'm gonna rotate the camera around. There's the other game. There's Aerosmith. And then on the floor are the parts. Uh, you know, there's really not that many 
parts to this. Uh, there's a few parts that are already back on the game, some few small parts at the back that are uh, uh, that are already back on the game, but it's really not. I mean, there's uh, when I did World Cup Soccer, I did not have enough floor space in the room uh, to to do this. So, yeah, okay, we've got the wax uh, buffed out. It's looking uh, nice and shiny. So let's go back to the chat real quick, and then we'll uh, we'll start putting parts back on. <clears throat> I know there's a bunch of people who like tech streams. Well, tell those people to join my, <laughs> to join my stream and uh, and say hello. Uh, it's uh, it's good to know I'm not the only one. Uh, you're one of those people. Well, welcome. Glad you could join. Uh, stick around. We're gonna start putting parts on this thing now. And all these little flappy bits that are flapping in the breeze will get uh, will get screwed down. So, gonna go to the floor. And here is the first part. Oh. Um, when I was pulling the uh, the cooking show maneuver and uh, and doing things behind the scenes last night, one of the other reasons I did that is I had a blo a broken plastic. Uh, I believe it's a plastic protector, not a plastic that came on the game. It's this this plastic on top of uh, Sparky's feet uh, that had snapped uh, at a, at the point where uh, the screw goes through the plastic. It's probably a stress uh, a stress crack there from you know screwing it down tight. Um, so I used some super glue to repair that. Again, it's uh, I, the last thing I need is uh, fingers full of super glue touching my computer and the cameras and stuff. So I went ahead and took care of that last night. Um, this looks to me like it goes around the graveyard. So actually, why don't I move the camera to the back of the game just to show you. And I can probably zoom in a little bit to give you a better view since I'm going to be working on the back of the game. There you go. Yeah, maybe I'll zoom out a touch, but yeah, there you go. It's kind of cool to be able to, uh, I'm using iPhones as cameras and uh, it's all touch interface for, for zooming and stuff with the uh, OBS camera app. Works really well. Oh, something else I figured out. Um, again, if you weren't watching uh, last weekend, there was these paper flaps uh, behind this Opto and for the life of me, I couldn't figure out why there's paper behind these optos, I think I figured it out. Uh, I did not cheat, I did not look it up online. Uh, I noticed that there's another one behind this other opto here, and then another one there still. Um, I gotta imagine, so this is the back side of the optos, that without that paper, there could be light bleed from one opto. Uh, so this opto connects with the one on the other side of Sparky by the other foot. Uh, I gotta believe that without that paper, there's a, <clears throat> a risk that this opto, the light, could bleed into the other one next to it and actually interfere with the other opto. So they they basically just use a little strip of paper to to prevent that light from bleeding. Uh, that, that makes sense to me. I don't. I'm just, it's just a guess. I, I don't know for sure, but uh, that that uh, seems like a reasonable explanation. If you if you've seen uh, paper behind optos before uh, and you know. Um, you know, for a fact, why it's there, by all means, chime in uh, so so we can know. Now I've got some posts, I'm pretty sure... This, I honestly, I should have taken a picture because there's these hex posts holding these uh, down and then three nuts. And without a picture, there's no way of knowing, like, all of the uh, screws are the same thread size. And so without a picture, you know, there you've got five screws, three nuts, and two posts of different lengths. Um, without uh, without a picture, there's no way you could know. That said, uh, you know, I was looking at this just before I started streaming. I didn't take a photo, and I kind of was able to deduce it. That's kind of what I'm saying about this game just not being that complex. And the reality is, if you're missing a photo, there's only so many permutations that that make sense. Um, so if you didn't take a photo, you know, maybe it'll take you longer because you have to try like, oh, does it go this way or does it go that way? Eventually, there's only so many ways it can go together and you, you'll figure it out. The other thing that just I found taking photos for, uh, for shopping games is it takes forever to go through them. Like you need a laptop or a tablet or something uh, with a big screen. It's really difficult on a phone uh, to, to look at big detailed pictures and, and spot one tiny detail. So normally I like to have a laptop or a tablet and just going through photo after photo after photo uh, taken at the exact right place and disassembly uh, and, and it's just like sometimes it's just easier to just just try it. Just try to figure it out. 
try to figure out what makes sense like when they built this game. Uh, in this case, there's a tall post here, a short post there, so it stands to reason that the two short posts are together and the two tall posts are together. We'll see what happened. Uh, hey, NVU for Prod, uh, good to see you. Glad you could make it. Um, is this the first shop uh, job since owning Metallica? Yes. So this game I was saying earlier is an early run game. It's been um, it was manufactured. Ooh, let's take a look at the sticker. Uh, if I can find it, uh, where is the sticker? Oh, it's down there. 2000, 2013. So it is an early run Metallica. Um, it's had work done to it before. I think it had some some rubbers were like purple and stuff on it. Um, but I've only owned it for about a year, and uh, it's the first time uh, that, that I do it, so, uh, yeah, it, and I was saying, it's not a particularly difficult one to do. Uh, Alright, let's keep going, I'm gonna do some more rubbers uh, while we're going before we get too far with the reassembly. I've got a bunch of little these guys here, there's some purple ones. And uh, since I don't have the correct clear ones, I'm, I, it makes me cringe to put white ones on it, but uh, they have to have something. Uh, so until I can get some clear ones in the mail, that's what I'm gonna do. Here's a black one over here. And it was, you know, the game was all mismatched, uh, which bugs me. So uh, it's gonna bug me now too, because I'm certainly not making it better by putting white ones on with uh, the rest being clear. Uh, I bought a, a big pack of, uh, of spare the the variety pack from Titan, which is great to have on hand because if you're stuck and you don't have what you need, uh, like it's probably in that variety pack. Uh, so yeah, when when you order, if it's your first time ordering rubber for a game, I would highly recommend don't order like they make kits for all the games. Um, assume the kit is wrong and doesn't have everything you need, and assume you're gonna need spares anyway when they break or whatnot. So just order your kit for the game, great, you've got it. Um, and then order uh, a bunch of extras, just like a variety pack that they sell. And they're cheaper too per per unit. Uh, you get a discount when you buy the variety pack, so that, that would be my recommendation. Alrighty, so uh, I've got some white ones on there now. Let's replace this guy here. I'm gonna try to find the length. And uh, it's written in tiny, uh, my eyes are going to hurt if I try to read that tiny text, so let's just check the manual instead. That's over here, that's number seven. Seven is a one and a quarter. So now I know to look for one and a quarter in my bag. And I roughly, you'll, you'll get a feel too for roughly what, what things are, uh, because they're tiny, there's one and a quarter, all right. I like the clears, they, uh, they let the light shine through them. Uh, I was saying the other day, when I first, uh, my first game that I bought uh, second hand that had clears, I really hated them, but I got used to them and look at me now, I'm putting, <laughs> I'm putting them in my game. And I'm trying to find any other rubbers I missed. There's really not a heck of a lot of rubber on this game, so, uh, you know, I got the slings, I got all the small posts. That post is actually kind of loose. Let's tighten that down a bit. All right, okay, so yeah, let's keep going. Put some more parts on there. Uh, going clear throughout, uh, what color flipper bats? Yeah, I haven't, that's a good question. Uh, uh, yes, I'm trying to go clear throughout. The only ones that are white on there are ones that I, uh, I failed to order correctly in my kit. This is the, uh, the spare bag of Titans that I have. I have some blue ones, which I think, oh, those, that's, that's real. Blue would look great, there's a ton of blue on this game. Uh, it has purple on there now, which I like, uh, but I'm ready for a change to just do something different. I think red would look really nice too. The, the Metallica letters are in red. A lot of the accent colors around the inserts is red. Um, so maybe I'll start with blue and see how I feel about that. And you know, the flipper rubbers are very easy to change. It's, it's nice to be able to uh, uh, customize them a little bit. Okay, so we got a plastic on. Let's keep going, get this ball rolling. Some, uh, some more plastic. <clears throat> now we've got a clear plastic that goes at the back here, I believe. And should go over here. Now I'm trying to figure out if this, I believe this light goes on one of the posts. Yeah, that's the light that illuminates uh, Sparky. And then I've got four of these little flathead screws for the other three posts. Um, so let's do that. 
If you're just joining, uh, welcome to the stream. We're coming to you live from San Jose, California. Had a super hot day today. I'm thankful for uh, air conditioning because if it wasn't for air conditioning, it would be too hot to do this in this room tonight. I would be, I would be sweating all over the game, which is gross. And uh, we're hoping to have uh, Metallica put back together to the point where we can play some games. But uh, tonight I'll probably just do, assuming I can get there, I'll probably just do a test game. Um, that screw is longer than the others, I just realized. So these screws are all the same thread, but one is slightly longer than the other. Uh, and on the short post it couldn't go all the way in. So that's kind of what I'm saying, like, yeah, I could have taken a note of that and just gotten it on the first try, but it's the kind of mistake that really doesn't matter because it's just not going to work. And then you'll realize, huh, well, that doesn't, that can't be where it goes. The screw doesn't fit. So, and then you pull it out and you realize, oh, there's two different size screws and two different size posts. So the short screw goes in the short post and the long screw goes in the long post. And and then there you go. It's all, all better. So... Uh, Yet yeah, not a big fan of, uh, of taking a million pictures. I do take uh, a lot of pictures when I do a playfield swap because uh, so when you're just shopping out a game, typically, you know, you may even be doing it all in one day, and so you're doing it so fast that you're going to have your memory. You're going to remember, you know, what you just did disassembling, um, which is going to help when you're doing a playfield swap. You know, I don't know, maybe some people do those in a day too. I don't, I don't, know, I don't know if that's humanly possible to do a playfield swap in one day. Um, you know, for me, I'm only working on it uh, in the, the little spare time that I have, you know, mostly only on weekends. So it, it can be several weeks, uh, you know, doing a playfield swap. So b between the time of first disassembling the top side, uh, which is the first thing that you typically do, to, to the end, you know, many weeks can have gone by, and then you're you're in real trouble because you won't. Rem it's it's too long. You just can't remember how everything was put together. If you're doing it all in one day, you're gonna have some recollection. So that's another that definitely another factory. Hey, Penn Stadium, glad you could make it. Uh, you were here the other night. We're gonna we're just gonna try to finish this tonight. So, hey, thanks for the sub. Awesome. It is uh, officially my first subscription on AV Pinball. I just became a Twitch affiliate today. So hey, there's a first for everything. That's super cool. Thank you so much. Uh, I'm glad you could uh, glad you could make it. Uh, we're gonna. This is uh, again uh, a little bit. I'm not nervous disassembling a game because, uh, like anything, it's a lot easier to disassemble than reassemble. Um, my biggest hope tonight was I figure out where everything goes and uh, don't look stupid on camera. Not any more than I usually do anyway. Alrighty. So. It's ramp time. I think next we're going to do these big ramps, these big metal ramps, which are super cool. They've got these laser cut Metallica logos in them, which are just badass. And uh, through the laser cut Metallica logo, they put a, a red gel on the back, so the uh, the logo looks uh, illuminated red. It's super cool. And um, I'm just gonna clean this. So before, as you uh, you put all your parts back on, of course, now I've cleaned the playfield. You want to make sure you're not putting dirty parts back on the game. So I'm gonna go ahead and give that ramp a nice cleaning. Alrighty, and uh, yeah, should be able to, uh, to put this one back on. Can anyone tell by look? Is this the left or the right? I don't know. But what I, uh, one of these days I'm going to eat my words and uh, my advice will be wrong and it's going to bite me in the ass, but uh, my statement earlier, if you're just joining, was that it'll only go back together one way, and so I don't know if this is the left or right, but we will figure it out by putting it on the game and seeing where it fits. Uh, so what are our options? It's either this, oh, I shouldn't have tightened that down. So I'm just going to bend that out of the way there. There's a light that's in the way. I think it might be this one. Um, so I've got a post in the back that it mounts to, and the two screws here, that looks like it fits pretty darn well. So I'm going to venture a guess that that is correct, and it is, it is not going to fit. Yeah, so 
This one is easy because uh, the ramp entrance for left and right is a totally different width. And so the dead giveaway that this is the uh, left and not the right is uh, the two holes that hold the front of the ramp, ramp down here don't even come close there, whereas they do here. So um, yeah, easy. Uh, if you remember, I uh, this, just to make it easily removable, I removed this switch, uh, which is now hanging loose with a wire here. And so there should be five screws that I need for this. There's one screw at the back, which is blind and I can't see. Uh, it would be much easier to do from the other side where the camera tripods are, so that's gonna be a challenge. The two uh, screws on the flap and then the two for the switch. So let's see what we have in terms of hardware. I've got two short screws and one long one. So the two short ones have gotta be um, for the same, so those must be the switch uh, bracket. Let's try to get that long screw. Now the danger is this, the post that holds this ramp is behind the ramp. I can't see it. I have to go by feel. And if I lose this screw, I, I don't even want to go there. Like if I lose this screw back there and it falls underneath the cabinet, like I might have to just continue the stream with no screw in there because otherwise ah, just, the, I can't lift the play field because the camera's in the way and it's going to be chaos. So I'm only getting one shot at this. Can I put this screw without completely blind, without being able to see it, without dropping the screw, making it impossible to retrieve? Let's find out. Let's find out. Oh, I think what I'm going to do to decrease the danger a little bit I hope this is a, a, as suspenseful for you as it is for me because I'm, I'm really... All right, so I'm gonna go ahead and put the screw through this. That's where it goes, it's, it's behind there. And hopefully that will help me not lose the screw. As long as I maintain kind of down pressure here, it won't fall and I can maybe even... Oh, I can see the tip of the screw underneath the ramp holding it up in the air. That's gonna work. Do I have it? And nope, almost, but I didn't lose it. Come on, you can do it. You can do it, little screw. Go to your home. Go to your home. There we go. It's, it's in. Oh. That probably, I, I remember this from uh, disassembly. That's probably going to be the toughest one all night. Uh, every other screw is uh, is easily accessible. Uh, just even standing from this side of the uh, the cabinet with the uh, the cameras in the way, that's probably the toughest one all night. So I think we're good. Whew, whew, we did it. Drama, yes. I mean, I'm trying to make this into a show, right? But that that was that was for real. I'm I'm sweating a little bit. So, alrighty. I'm glad you're still watching, Holly. Everyone, say hi to Holly. The nicest person in the world, Holly060. Alright, so now let's get that switch back on. And so this is the switch that uh, tells the game you've successfully made the ramp shot. And it's got a, it's just a little uh, micro switch. And it's connected, it's got a little uh, lever here that's connected to this metal uh, wire that the ball uh, passes through. And so that just needs to go there. The, 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 like I was saying the other night, the wires have memory. In other words, uh, if you don't even know what I mean by the wire having memory, it's kind of a crazy statement, right? The wire is flexible. It's a flexible stranded cable wire. However, um, it has been in that exact same position or shape since the game was made, since 2013. And, uh, and just by its nature, you know it's flexible you can you know once you remove the part you can you can move the wire around no problem but um, it still retains the shape that w it was in all those years and uh, it just once you get the part back where it's supposed to go that wire is just kind of like telling you ah, I'm home I'm in my good position now uh, which really helps kind of tell you the person working on it that you did it right that the part is exactly where it was before if the wire is fighting you and doesn't seem like it's it's at its at rest position uh, where where it is 
it's probably you probably made a mistake um, so that's another hint um, super helpful for the bottom side there's not so much wiring on the top side right because that's you know you, the player you know doesn't want to see all the, these wires they're mostly on the bottom so when you're doing a, a play field swap you're taking uh, so what I have behind me here this is a funhouse play field a, a used one that came out of my game um, you know you're just completely replacing a piece of wood is basically what it is um, there is a whole mess of wires underneath there and uh, you have to take it all out to do a playfield swap. It's a lot of uh, labor. Um, and yeah, the, the memory of the wires is a huge help for, for doing that. Maybe one time in the future, I, I probably won't do a live stream of a, of a playfield swap because it would take ages, like literally many, many weekends, working like 10 hours a day. Uh, but what I'll do is like a flipper rebuild or some other thing like that where uh, you can uh, come under the hood with me and see, uh, see what the machine looks like on uh, you know on the bottom side with all of that wiring that would be fun to do like a flipper rebuild or some other simple thing that you know I can do in the course of an hour I think that would be really cool all right enough chatting let's get back to work and uh, I probably should read the uh, the chat as well see see how everyone's doing all righty and that one's easy because the screws are right there. And then, I was saying, uh, ramps are normally attached uh, with two small Phillips screws uh, directly into the wood. So I'm gonna go fish those screws. And you have to be kind of gentle with these screws. They are, um, they're very, very small, but they're very important because they hold the, the front of the ramp down. And, uh, in this case, it's a little bit easier because the hole's already there, right? So I'm just putting the screw back into its, uh, its existing original hole. If you're doing a new play field, you're installing it, just be careful because it can be a little difficult and uh, you don't want to strip those screws. If you, if you just go at it um, with too much force on the, on the head of the screw, you're gonna you're gonna strip it, and uh, the last thing you want to do is muck up a screw. You have to drill it out, and then potentially you know the hole is too large, so you have to go up a size of screw. But the flap, uh, the little cutout on the flap, is too small for a bigger screw. So then you have to fill the hole and re-drill it, and it's just a pain in the butt. You're gonna save yourself a lot of time and energy by simply being gentle with the uh, the screw and not overdriving it. Phillips are really, really terrible. Like, I don't know how long they've been around, like probably a hundred years or whatever. We've, invent we've invented better screw types. Like we have uh, Robson or Robertson, the, squ the square drive ones. Uh, we have Torx, there's a whole bunch of others. Like, they're so much better. Um, and uh, I, I wish they, they were more standard and, and they used them, but uh, Phillips is still king and uh, is cheap, I guess, so that's what they use. Um, and all right, so we've got this ramp in now. So the front is all solid, the back is attached. You'll notice the front, or the, uh, the exit of the ramp is all kind of still wobbly. That's because the wire form isn't in. Uh, as soon as we attach the, uh, the wire form, you should see that uh, stiffen up pretty good. The, the, the way the games are designed is every part that's connected to another uh, has some role in supporting uh, the, you know, each other. So that should stiffen up as soon as we put the other part, but let's get the, uh, the right ramp on. <clears throat> all right, so this guy is a lot bigger. Uh, that's gonna go right back here and it's all filthy. So before we put it back on, try not to uh, drop any of the screws on the floor. And uh, let's do that. I'll spray some uh, cleaning product right onto my cloth. And then, oh, it's so satisfying to see it become all shiny again uh, once it's clean. Alrighty. Hope you're having a good night and uh, staying safe among all the, uh, the craziness in the world today. Pinball is where uh, where I go, that's my happy place. Uh, either playing or, or working on a game, you really forget about everything else. It's a, it's a wonderful thing. Uh, and if you don't have pinball at home, you can always play 
pinball on your computer, on your uh, on your tablet, whatnot. There's some wonderful apps out there. I just started playing uh, the new Zen Pinball one. Uh, I think the name of the app is like Williams Pinball, and the logo is the uh, the, the the icon is the Williams logo. Um, it's pretty fun. I have been playing pinball arcade for a long time before that, of course, which uh, was was out before. Uh, but I started playing the Williams one and by Zen, and it's it's pretty good. It's fun. Uh, I like that they have these daily challenges in it where you can kind of uh, play a little bit of the game for free and uh, and work on unlocking content in the game uh, for free just by playing a little bit every day. So that's been pretty cool. Alrighty, let's see. So now we should have... Uh, where would this go? There's probably... Probably a post that I need to connect to. And uh, there's going to be a post right up here. That is missing a hex post I can see right away. And then the back is going to go on there. Okay, so I have got a screw back here, which definitely takes a, uh, a screw. And that post looks like it's in the correct place. And um, the only thing I'm apparently missing, oh, it's right there. Of course, this is from when I cleaned. I was going to say, like, that's not just going to hover in the air there. I was cleaning those red lane dividers, and uh, I put the part down, not with the part it goes. So, yeah, it's, uh, it's very easy to misplace parts. There's a lot of small little parts, and I, you know, I was really lucky that it was sitting there, right there and it caught my eye, but... Uh, Never put a part down or a piece of hardware not with the thing it goes with because you, you will easily get lost. Now in this case, again, uh, this game is not overly complicated. There's only so, so many ways it could go together. Uh, I knew just intuitively that there had to be a metal post there and that I, you know, I misplaced it, so I, I would have found it. Uh, but sometimes it's not so obvious, so keep, you want to try to keep, uh, keep things together. All right, so I've got... Uh, let's take a look at our hardware. I've got the same two little um, wood screws that go in the front of the ramp, and now I've got four other screws that I had placed down with this. So there's two small ones and two long ones. Just like the other ramp, I've got a switch, which is on a bracket that needs to be reinstalled. So that's gonna get the two little ones. Uh, the two long ones are gonna be uh, by the process of deduction, <laughs> the two little ones are going to be for uh, the posts that actually support the back of the ramp, and then obviously the two wood ones in the front. So I think we're good. Let's start with the uh, support ones, and uh, we'll put those in. These are uh, unlike the other ramp; uh, they're not tucked in somewhere I can't see. So I'm in no danger with these guys. I'm not going to lose them. All right. Uh, it helps, by the way, when you put hardware in, I, this is true for car tires, uh, it's also true in pinball, uh, put all your hardware in but don't tighten it down because there's some wiggle, the holes uh, that fit the screws are bigger than the screw shaft diameter, and so there's wiggle to it, and if you, if you put the first screw in and then tighten it down all the way, the odds are uh, things won't be aligned such that you can actually get the other screws in. So uh, put, put the screw in almost all the way in, but don't tighten all the way. And uh, just do that for all of the other screws as well. Like um, now this is still loose, right? But I've got the two uh, screws holding it in. Uh, and then the, the last thing I'm gonna do, well not the last thing, I'm gonna do the wood screws next. Uh, and then I can come back and uh, finally uh, tighten, the, uh, tighten the ones at the back. And it's gonna happen, I guarantee you, one of these days, you're going to forget to tighten a screw, and it's fine, it's not the end of the world, you're going to start playing the game and the thing's going to just like be vibrating or flapping around. Not the end of the world. Uh, I just hope for your sake that when that happens, that you don't have to do disassembly to get to those screws. Um, this is not a very layered game, but there absolutely are games where in order to even get to the screw, to get a screwdriver on it, uh, like there's stuff, just stuff upon stuff upon stuff stacked above, and you, you can't get a tool on it. So I hope for your sake that if you forget a, uh, a loose screw somewhere, that <laughs> it's not too much work 
uh, to uh, to get back to it and be able to tighten it down. Uh, it's happened to me, of course. It's going to happen to you. The good news is if you're doing something for the second time, like you did it first to you know disassemble, or then you reassembled, and you're doing it again a second time just to get to that one screw, you've just done it. In, in, in two directions, twice, uh, like w once and then again in the other direction. And now you're doing it a third time effectively. Um, it's a lot faster. Like once you've put, taken a game apart and put back together again, the second time around, you're just gonna blow through it. You know, you're gonna have the muscle memory or the, the mental memory of where things are uh, and it's gonna be way, way faster. So if that makes you feel any better, it's, it's faster the second time around. So I'm gonna take my own advice here and not only tighten this, but I'm also gonna go check the other one that I did blind before to make sure. Now I'm worried, right? Because I can't even see that one back there. Uh, all right, that's pretty good. Uh, what is the most difficult game to disassemble? Uh, that's a good question. Uh, thanks for the question. Um, the most difficult ones are the ones with the most stuff, and generally the ones with the most stuff are probably the Super Pin series from Williams, which are from like 92, 93-ish to 94. They came out with a line of games called Super Pins. They're wide bodies. The games are, are physically wider. They've got like an extra inch on both sides, and they're just chock full of stuff. Um, at games like Twilight Zone, like Star Trek Next, Next Generation, sound familiar, right, Holly? Um, those are the, they're, they're not difficult, uh, per se, there's just more to them, and so they take more work, you have to be more meticulous, there's that many more parts, that many more opportunities for a mistake. But if you take your time, and you're systematic about it, it's really all the same thing. The only other thing that I would say sometimes is difficult is when you have these games with multiple layers of things. Sometimes you have to fish wires through the layers. Uh, and my fingers are, I mean, they're not fat, but they're also not super tiny and slender. <laughs> that probably sounded funny, but if you have smaller fingers, it can be easier to get them. I'm sure it's the same as working on a car, right? It can be easier to get them between narrow parts and, uh, and be able to fish wiring through and things like that. Uh, so that, that can be difficult, but uh, other than that, it's uh, just slow and steady uh, wins the race, I would say. Uh, I'm stuck with TPA and Pinball FX3 since around March 24. I miss playing real pinball on location. I hear ya. I hear ya. It's, uh, it's a sad thing for sure, and, and I hope we can get back to it soon. Uh, yeah, it's just, it is, it is not the same. Uh, we have a few pinball places in, in the San Jose area. Uh, I'm thinking Level Up and Camp Bowl and Mini Boss downtown San Jose. And uh, it's just, you got to feel for those guys because that's their, you know, for us, it's a, it's a, it's a pastime. It's, it's something fun, which is, which is important. Don't get me wrong. I'm not minimizing uh, the importance of, of that. For them, it's their livelihood. So it's on a whole different level uh, for them, right? And so just on in multiple different ways, it, you just you really gotta hope that that we can back get back to uh, to normal. But uh, yeah, it's it's guess the jury is still out. It's too too early to say uh, what happens there. Hope you're um, at least still able to um, to have some fun uh, playing the games uh, virtually. You know the beauty of pinball arcade and uh, pinball FX on uh, playing on on a, on the computer is uh, you can learn the, the rules of the games real well, uh, get a ton of practice just to understanding the rule sets of the games and the different objectives, etc. which on you know some games is non-trivial, uh, and uh, it's cheaper to learn them that way than to learn putting, uh, putting quarters in a machine, right? So there's a, that's, the, uh, you know, that's at least the, the positive side. Alrighty, so let's keep reassembling. We've got both left and right ramps. Uh, if you're just joining us tonight, uh, we're coming to you live from San Jose, doing a shop job on Metallica. This is day two of two, hopefully two. Hopefully by the end of tonight, we don't need a part three. My goal is to have the game back together by the end of the night and we can actually fire up the machine. So let's put more parts on it. Alrighty, uh, what's next? What is next? I'm gonna do this big plastic next. First I'm gonna clean it, of course, and get some uh, 
some Novus cleaner on my rag. You're noticing there's these, this plastic is doubled. Uh, you're not seeing double, that's because uh, that's, uh, this game has had plastic protectors put on it. Uh, they help prevent uh, plastics from breaking when they're struck by this heavy steel ball flying around the game, uh, which is an upgrade you can do to your games. I don't tend to do them uh, to my games, uh, to be honest, uh, especially newer games, because I, you know, they're not in an arcade, they're in, in, in my home, and under home use, it would be rare to get a, a broken plastic. Um, that said, my game came uh, with them, and uh, they don't really hurt the look of the game, so why not? Uh, there's no reason not to. I probably should reinstall this Switch too. So before I do that, let's just put this down over here. And there is a spinner that I had removed, and now it's probably time to uh, to put that back in before it becomes harder to access. Um, if you can see, yep, you can see that on the camera. So there's two little red screws. Another trick you can do, instead of uh, putting the part down on the floor with its uh, corresponding hardware, in this case, the uh, the part could not go on the floor because it's it's connected with a wire and it didn't didn't want to or need to uh, to pull this whole assembly out of the game, disconnecting it, etc. You certainly could do that but it didn't hurt anything to leave it there. Two, I have these two screws that go with this. Since I can't put those two things together on the floor, I'm not just gonna put two red screws on the floor. I mean, it's gonna be way too easy to forget. Just put them back in the hole, like where they came from. Uh, if that's an option, then you know you're not gonna misplace. Like, where does this screw go? It's like, it's, it's literally in the hole that it, it's supposed to be in. Uh, and so that was my, uh, that was my technique there. So let's go ahead and put that back in. These are wood, they're really sheet metal screws. Um, if we're being honest with ourselves, uh, Stern, those are, are sheet metal uh, screws, they're not wood screws. Um, that said, pinball makers, everyone, like Williams, Gottlieb, etc., everyone's guilty of it. Uh, they've been using sheet metal screws directly into wood for decades. I, I don't know why that is, I guess they're just readily available. And the reality is that sheet metal screws and wood screws are not that different. Uh, and uh, they, they <laughs> the sheet metal screws work work pretty well for this case. Maybe this is where someone's gonna correct me and tell, tell me I'm full of baloney that although those look like sheet metal screws, they certainly have the head, uh, very, the, the hex head that's, that's, that's exactly like sheet metal screws you find at the hardware store. Maybe someone will correct me and tell me the thread is slightly different and they're actually wood screws with a hex head, totally possible. Um, but uh, yeah, who knows, if you know and you're on the chat, let us know, are those screws that hold brackets on pinball machines? They're used all over the place underneath the game. They look like sheet metal screws, but are they? Or are they wood screws? You tell me, a uh, viewer on the uh, on the internet. Alrighty, um, one of my older favorite games is TZ. I've been playing pinball since before TZ came out. TZ, of course, stands for Twilight Zone. An amazing, amazing game. One of the greatest pinball machines of all time, of all time. Twilight Zone is fantastic, I love it. Uh, and my game is for sale, I don't ask me why, um, but yes, I have one, uh, I, I may be streaming it again in the future, we'll see, uh, man, I, I, I'm thinking twice, uh, I'm not gonna lie, I'm thinking twice about selling that game because it's just so good. Uh, it, that's, it's one of those games that's, that's a little bit polarizing, some people love it, like me, some people really don't like it. Uh, I'm gonna say like there's a lot of games where you're you hear people say I don't like this game and it's like yep I understand why like maybe I disagree maybe I like it but I understand why Twilight Zone for the life of me I can't understand not like I'll give you an example Star Trek next generation I totally get why people don't like that game I love it I, I used to own one for a very long time I think it's great but I, I understand if you don't like it there's some things about it that that are not great Twilight Zone? I don't. Like, I don't get it. Like, who could not love that game? It's so good. It's so good. It's And the, the music, the sound, the play field, uh, everything about it is just so good. So yes, I 100% am with you, Twilight Zone. Uh, man, it's a, it's, that's one of the good ones. It's one of the good ones for sure. All right, let's keep going and I'm chatting. Of course, I'm going to chat this whole way through. I'm lying. I'm not going to stop chatting. That would be boring to watch. Uh, my friends are, are uh, poking fun at me doing the stream, telling me that I, uh, that I talk too much, but uh, 
I have a feeling that uh, this wouldn't be interesting if I was just standing here in silence. We'd rather talk about pinball, talk about the machines we love. It's, it's way more fun, come on. All right, so I've got two uh, wood screws. These are definitely wood screws, not sheet metal screws. Uh, they have a round head and uh, they don't need a washer. And they go, one goes here for sure on the side rail. And then we've got ourselves a mystery. Oh no, we don't have a mystery. The other one goes right there. So this is super typical. Uh, these wood screws with a round head, they're almost always used on side rails. Now, this is another reason why I don't really bother with, with pictures is once you've done another, enough of these playfield swaps, doesn't matter which company it is, you know, Williams or Stern or whatever, you kind of see the patterns of how they're made. And uh, the, those patterns just repeat over and over. So you, you'll, you'll get the hang of it. Like it's, it's uh, um, you'll just come to know, oh, that's one of those screws that goes here. And uh, it, it, it just makes it a lot easier. So we've got two little posts. Uh, again, I didn't take a picture. There's three screws, one long one, two short ones. I'm just gonna uh, deduce that these posts go on the short one. And this long threaded one, uh, when they're on the side like that, the, again, the typical pattern is those are used to hold down uh, ramps, like wire forms. Uh, and so that's likely where the wire form support goes for the left ramp. Uh, so okay, so we've got that plastic in now. Um, Andre, is your goal tonight to finish the entire play field? I just got back from watching. Yes. Uh, it is. Uh, I think we can do it. We've got, let's see, the slings, a few other small plastics, some wire forms. Uh, it's only 9 p.m. On the, on the Pacific Coast. I'm going to go probably till close to 10 is my guess. Uh, I'm doing a lot of, this would be a lot faster if I was just like working, working, working and not chatting so much. But chatting is, is half the fun. So uh, <laughs> I'm probably not going to, if we're being honest, I'm not going to shut up and only work. I will need some water at some point. Um, so um, I will do my best to finish it tonight. I don't want there to need to be a part three. That would be lame. That'd be way too many different uh, episodes, if, you, if you'll say, for, for this. So yes, I'm gonna try to finish tonight. Let's go. And I'm trying to speed this up. <clears throat> now we're on to some uh, smaller plastics. And uh, yeah, I'm gonna try to, try to speed it up because I realize now at my, at my current rate, as much as I'm, I'm saying over and over that uh, we're going to finish tonight, uh, at my current rate, uh, time is escaping me and, and we won't actually make it there. So, where does this go? It looks like a guitar. Does it go here? Yes, it does. Uh, so that was the, the tell is there's a little notch here and you're looking for, for stuff with a notch. It's like, oh, well, yeah, it's got to go here. The other tell, if you're, lo you're looking for a plastic, uh, and you don't know where it goes on the game. It's just like a puzzle, like a puzzle puzzle. Uh, when there's a flat edge, normally that's on one of the four sides of the puzzle, right? On a pinball machine, there's only three because there's the arch and the flippers in the front. So it's just like a, a puzzle. This, this thing has a flat side, so it probably goes on one of the edges. There's a notch, boom, you, you know exactly where it goes. Easy as that. Alrighty, so th these have washers, which wouldn't be typical. I'm gonna go ahead and leave them in. It doesn't hurt anything to have them. So let's see if I can put that washer in. And... Uh, did I get that in? No. All right, there it is. You definitely want to uh, try to have these parts as far away from the side of the cabinet as possible. I was saying before, the holes are, are slightly bigger than uh, the diameter of the screw, and there's some wiggle room. Try to place parts as far away from the cabinet uh, as you can. The reason is you want, um, you do not want parts rubbing. Like the playfield moves in and out of the game for, for servicing. You do not want parts extending beyond the edges of the playfield. All that's going to do is wreck everything, uh, scratch the side of the cabinet, um, damage your plastics potentially. Um, so if, if there's wiggle room at all on, on those edges, try to, to keep those parts uh, as far away as possible, if that makes sense. That's another tip. 
Uh, some people don't like TZ because of the Powerball. The Powerball is brilliant! It's so much fun! It's like, what other game has this this ball that just plays totally different than everything else? It's, it's so cool. I love it. I'll never understand. Alright. Okay, so now we have some uh, in-lane, out-lane dividers. This is either the left or right. And that sure looks like it fits not there. Uh, that can't go there because the screws are different. Ooh, this has got to go this way. Don't want to lose any parts there. Okay, so... This is a bit of a sandwich, but let's just make sure that fits. Yes, okay, so actually I'm gonna move that camera so you can see what I'm working on down here. Uh, how is that? Is that... Um, still can't see it, can you? All right. There you go. So what I'm working on now, it's, it's, uh, it's tough being the camera person and the actor all at the same time, but uh, there you go. And the technician, right? I'm just it's like all these different brains have to all work at the same time. Uh, I could sure use a camera person in VU4 Prod if you're still uh, if you're still there. Uh, so that's not the order it goes, of course, uh, because the metal goes inside. But it's a sandwich. There's uh, there's two layers of these gray posts. So the first layer of gray posts, uh, and then the metal bracket, and then after that. Uh, some more gray posts, and then before I put in the final plastic, I will give this a quick wipe on both sides. You can clean the uh, the top very easily uh, with the game assembled, but what's not as easy to clean is the the bottom side. Um, so that's it's handy to do that while it's uh, while it's in pieces. There you go, and then we get to nuts. Uh, great response. I enjoy your reviews on other classic pins between you your playfield tests. I'm glad to hear it. Uh, you can work at SJC anytime. SJT. SJT. Oh, yes. Uh, yes, I think I know what you're saying. I, I, will, uh, I won't expand on the, uh, the acronym, not to, to give anything away, but I think I know what you're saying there. It'll have to be between us. Alrighty. So there it is, one, nicely snug. And then the next one will be the same thing, but on the other side. So now before I do that, I will just move the camera up slightly so that you can see the other side. <clears throat> it's sunny drive time. One of the things that's been a little bit tricky uh, with my, my tripod doing this is uh, I am using a photographer's uh, head on the tripod, not a videographer. The difference is a, a photographer, there's three axes. You've got your rotation, your, your tilt one way, your tilt front to back. Um, that's definitely not ideal for video. Normally the, the head on a, I mean, NVU4 Prod, you can tell uh, you can tell people better than I can, but those tend to be uh, a ball, and it's just easier to adjust in kind of every direction at once. I definitely feel like I need to uh, to pick one of those up uh, at some point to, to make it easier to adjust the camera, uh, you know, quickly and easily. All right, so there's our, our sandwich. I'm gonna uh, wipe down that metal piece. I see a little bit of black dust on the top of it. Okay. And uh, I don't want to drop these, so I'm going to put them down real quick. Then a layer of black, or sorry, gray um, spacers. Let's go back to the, uh, the chat here. And uh, yeah, there you go. We're uh, going to do this plastic next. Okay, and then. Uh, Easy peasy, just need some nuts on there, and that's it. And viewer for prod, tell us, uh, have you uh, have you picked up any any new games uh, anytime recently? I know you, you know you like to uh, to collect. 
tell us what your most uh, recent acquisition is. I'm curious to hear. It's been a little while since uh, since we chatted about that that thing, sort of thing, or since I've seen your uh, your collection. Any new games? And if, if not any new games, tell us what you uh, what's got your eye, what you want, what you're looking for, what you want. All righty. All righty, looking good. Got those inlane outlane dividers in. Let's go get some more parts from the floor. <sighs> We're getting there. We're, there's not that many parts left on the floor. This is exciting. All right, so. Uh, now we've got a uh, sling, which this this has got to be the left one here for sure. And uh, we've got uh, two nuts and a screw and a post. So one of the posts is going to be for this uh, lamp, almost certainly. That appears to go there. So before I assemble that, I'm just going to put all the hardware down. By the way, one thing that will absolutely happen to you is you'll drop a nut on the floor. And uh, especially if you're in a garage or something like that and the floor is not super clean, it is a royal pain to find a uh, piece of hardware sometimes and uh, super, super time consuming. Um, you just, you just, uh, now I'm, I'm rushing, I'm realizing that because I want to finish this tonight, the danger is if you're rushing, you may drop a nut and uh, it'll end up costing you, like it'll take you longer uh, than it would have if you just were like slow and steady. Slow and steady turtle wins the race. Um, if, yeah, so you want to try to work as efficiently as possible without causing yourself more work. Um, if that makes any sense. All right, so and I'm mindful of that right now. I don't want to drop drop any hardware. Let's get that tightened down. And. So there goes the, uh, the the Phillips screw. It goes into that post to hold down the uh, the little light. Some people, maybe uh, maybe some people watching the stream, really don't like these spotlights. Some people go out of their way to add them too, um, and uh, you know they just litter their games with spotlights, which is uh, a little a little silly if you ask me. And they're very unsightly, so. There is a solution out there for you if you like a lot of light and you don't like these spotlights. You can put pin stadiums in your games. That's what it's all about. Not my cup of tea. Uh, I like uh, the contrast of light and dark myself. But if you like a lot of light and you you can play better that way, by all means, put some pin stadiums in your in your game. It's a it's a cool product, and they're they're good people over there. So there's a shout out to uh, to pin stadium if you're still watching. All right, so there you go. We got all that buttoned up. Uh, the light's still in there, which is great. And now we're gonna do the very same thing with the other one. <sighs> okay, so this one's only got one nut, not two. I've got a screw, a post, and a nut, which tells me that something attaches, there's still, you know, this is just like the other one. It has three holes, one, two, three. But I've only got two things, a nut and a, uh, and a screw, not three, which probably means that there's a part coming down a little bit later that, uh, that is going to um, be part of the equation. Again, it's a common pattern. It's probably gonna be the wire form, uh, without knowing for sure, it's probably gonna be the wire form that's gonna attach to this uh, sling. That's super common, of course, because Ramps returns return uh, mostly return balls safely to the flippers, and uh, and so that's right near the in lane out lane, uh, and so for that reason the uh, the wire forms very often attach to the uh, and you can see actually there's another giveaway uh, there's three screws coming up here two uh, two of them barely stick out on the bottom and this one is super tall this one is not like the others. Therefore, when I have two pieces of hardware, you know, they're probably for the two things that are alike uh, down there. And this washer probably goes on the tall one. And then just like the other side, I've got a post which holds up that light that probably goes in there. You can use a nut driver on those posts, by the way. You don't have to use a wrench. It's a, it's a quarter inch nut driver. It works great on those, those aluminum posts. And, uh, and then just this uh, 5 16 nut on the other side. 
And uh, yeah, quarter, a quarter inch, five sixteenths are by far the most common two size, si uh, sizes of nut drivers uh, you want to get. Uh, these are Klein tools. They're really, really nice. I was using uh, some cheap ones before, but uh, uh, I upgraded to the Klein ones and they're, they're just fantastic. Um, there's one thing though that, uh, and I, I talked about this uh, on Sunday, so I, I won't repeat myself, but there's one thing I did not mention about the Harbor Freight ones that is actually better in a way than the Klein ones uh, that I forgot to mention the other night, which is the uh, the tip on the Klein tools is a lot thicker metal, which you know is a good thing, right? They're more it's the thicker metal is probably way more strong and durable and true, probably true. But you know, so what I'm talking about is the the thickness of the of the ring around the uh, where the head goes on the uh, on the tool um, is is pretty thick metal. If I show you. Grab the. Uh, this is the equivalent. Let's, I'm going to show you the same size. So quarter inch, both sides. These are both quarter inch tools. Look how thin the metal is on the Harbor Freight ones. Sure, that means that it's not as strong and it's probably going to wear out. Uh, but what it also means is the this gets you into a tighter area than this. Sometimes that extra thickness of the metal on the tool impedes your ability to get into tight quarters. And so, yeah, you hold on to your Harbor Freight ones if you have them. There's absolutely been instances where there's a, especially on the bottom of the play field, there's a bracket or something, like there's a bend in a bracket and there's a nut, like right at that bend. This is this tool is too big, it, it doesn't fit. You can't get it on the nut, where, whereas the Harbor Freight ones uh, fit just fine. Um, so yeah, they're, they both have their, uh, the pros and cons, I guess. There's no, there's no perfect tool out there, or maybe there is, and I, I don't have it. So if, if you think you, you know a perfect tool, uh, hop on the chat. Tell us like what. I'm always looking for tools. I love shopping for tools. What should I get? Uh, wish we could link up a camera control system where I can follow along in real time with a camera. That is next level right there. That's such a good idea. That would totally be possible. I need a, a, a pan tilt zoom capable like motorized camera mount and then you could totally do that yeah we, we gotta let's let's talk let's talk we gotta figure that out <laughs> just try to see if we can do that <clears throat> all righty so we're down to one two three four parts four parts we're getting really close that's 9 17 i think i don't want to speak too soon but i think we're gonna make it i think we're gonna make it so is this left or right this does not look like it fits at all. So by the process of elimination, yes, this looks like the left one. Yep, that fits right there. Uh, that one has uh, only one mounting point, actually the, the left wire form. So before I put it in for real, I'm gonna give it a wipe down. That's why we're here tonight. We're doing uh, no sense taking a game apart and just putting it back together without cleaning everything, right? That's defeats the purpose, so I'm going to give it a quick wipe down. Honestly though, this wire form is black. It's black powder coat, and uh, you know, the dust on games is black, so you wouldn't really notice it too much. That said, that dust will, you know, that's on the ramp now, can absolutely get flung to, uh, to other parts, so you definitely want, even if it's not visible, um, it's a good idea to just get everything in clean. Uh, this ramp is attached. Only with one nut, believe it or not, is this big long piece. Uh, but yeah, so the two ends here slot into the holes on the uh, the metal part, uh, the, the 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 entrance rather. And then uh, there's an attach point here with uh, two washers sandwiched between washers and another nut, and that's it. That's the that's all that holds that ramp in. And, uh, and here, I just know again from, from experience, this is an 11, 30 second. Um, so a quarter inch is the most, and, and 5 sixteenths are the most common for these big beefy ones that, uh, you know, there's only one, so they're using a, a beefier uh, screw and nut. Those are 11, 30 seconds. So pretty much, uh, you know, I've got a big tool chest here. Someone the other night commented on my tool chest. Uh, yeah, you, you really don't need that many tools. Uh, that, this is not all for pinball. There's, there's uh, certainly a small number of commonly used tools uh, that you need. Okay. Down to the third last part, 
which is a small plastic. It looks like it probably goes around here because there's an exposed area here with, with some bulbs. Sure enough. And there goes a nut. Luckily on my, uh, on my uh, game room carpet, uh, nuts are pretty easy to spot, unlike my garage. Man, the garage is just like concrete and uh, it is really, really tough to, uh, to spot any, uh, any, any parts that have, uh, that have been lost. Alrighty. We're getting close. We're getting close. So let's put those in. Again, these are plastic protectors, right? The clear one, this did not come with the game. That's an aftermarket upgrade. It's just there to, uh, to protect the game. And uh, it is a uh, design of some sort of very nasty looking bug with a guitar on it. <laughs> Very Metallica. This game is very metal. Not a big Metallica fan. Actually, I never really liked their music. Um, but this is just such a fantastic game. You can't help but love it, even if you don't really like the music. And uh, you, you know, you'll grow to love it. Uh, I, I certainly. I'm not gonna lie. Like I never really liked Metallica after I bought this game. Uh, when I first got it, I was playing it a whole bunch, and. Uh, uh, Alrighty. Before you know it, I was humming and uh, whistling Metallica. So, <laughs> okay. So this is the second to last part now. It is the other wire form, and there's a whole lot of hardware that goes with it. I'm gonna be real careful here putting these down so that I don't uh, don't drop anything on the floor. There's a lot of screws and nuts. So first thing first. We are going to clean. Uh, the end is in uh, the end is in sight here. We're we're doing good. There's not a lot left. I'm trying to see while uh, while I'm looking well, while I'm cleaning this rather if I've forgotten anything. Um, if you see anything that looks funny, by all means, give us a shout. But I think I think we're looking all right. Uh, the game is starting to to come together. That spinner there I never disassembled, so that's all good. There's a spotlight here. This is all loose because uh, the ramp goes underneath it. And so other than this spotlight and this, this front area, give everything a little wiggle to see if maybe you put it part down and you didn't tighten everything. Now's the time to do it when the game is still out here uh, and easily accessible. That's a slightly loose, maybe I'll give that a little tug. I have to put that down and use my other handle. Oh yeah, so right, I, I had to loosen this to install the ramp, uh, which you may or may not be able to see right now. Um, to install this this ramp, I needed to uh, to move this lamp out of the way, and I've never retightened it. So it definitely pays to uh, to take a look, um, to take a look at everything. I'm gonna bend that up a little bit. All right. Okay, so now let me uh, make sure the the view is zoomed out again. We're getting close to the end. So what I'm going to do is center this camera roughly and zoom it out so you can get a, uh, a better overall view of everything when we, uh, when we get close to done here. Alrighty. And we'll go back to the chat. All right, so uh, this guy here obviously is the wire form for the uh, right ramp. Let's see how many attach points we have. We have one attach point here, one here, and then uh, the, the two stems that go into the other ramp. So that's gonna go down here. All right. And then, oh, that's probably what that was. Yeah, so I was wondering where that uh, post goes. Um, I believe the, the wire length here is kind of telling me that, uh, that, that there, this, this lamp here uh, goes on top of a post. So that's probably where that went. Okay, so we should need... A washer down under there. I'm gonna collect all the hardware here. There's, a, I've got two nuts and two screws and a bunch of washers. 
These typically, these uh, these wire forms, uh, you've got washer, wire form, washer, and then a nut, and that whole thing kind of all sandwiches together to uh, to apply pressure and, and hold the ramp in place. Uh, I've got one more washer and one more nut for the other one. This uh, again, this is the second lot to last part, so we're getting close to uh, to done here. And uh, okay, so uh, you'll notice there's a ton of play here, right? Like this can get it attached in uh, in many different ways. Um, sometimes you have to adjust them after playing to play test the game a little bit uh, to get it exactly correct. For this, you just kind of want to get the, the the point where the ball drops down onto the play field centered on that lane is probably the best thing to, to start. And then uh, play the game, see how it plays. Uh, you might find that there's a hang up or something like that and you need to adjust it. Uh, but that's trivially, trivially done just by removing the glass. There's no, you know, no major work needed uh, to, uh, to get to that. Um, since typically these, these wire forms that end up in the, uh, the in lane are the, the very last thing. They're the first, first thing you remove and the last thing you put back on when you're done. So yeah, we're, we're there, we're very close. Now I've got uh, two screws left, and a post, and a washer. So let's try to figure out where this goes. So there's one washer left, and uh, it's got to go either there or there. I'm not sure yet. And, uh, and we have a post. So that, if I were to guess, that post goes in there, and this goes on top, this lamp. It's one of the last things we need to do here. Let's, let's just say we put this post in here. Would that lamp's wire be the correct length? I absolutely would. Yeah, see, see, this is another example of, I wasn't quite sure, I didn't take a picture, but the wire uh, memory that I was talking about before is telling me that that is correct. That that that's that's just where it, that's where it wants to go. It's it's you know I'm not even touching it and it's almost lying exactly in the correct position. So that's got to be correct. Uh, and we'll put the screw in, which will leave a washer and a screw for the other side of that plastic. And uh, that should be it for that part right there. Not quite sure what that's pointed at. Uh, it's in a spotlight. So uh, it probably wants to be pointed away from the, the player, of course, not to, to cause any, uh, any bright, bright lights uh, in the face. So I'm just going to leave it like that. And then we've got one uh, small screw and a washer for this, uh, this plastic that covers the, uh, the scoop. This is a very important uh, piece. It has two lamps uh, over the scoop, one for extra ball and one for crank it up. I mean, if you what the most two important shots on the entire game, right, are on Metallica, I'd probably crank it up an extra ball. <laughs> so uh, it's very important to have proper indication of, of those shots. All righty. Um, overall, nice coverage, good audio too. When you leave frame, I think a lot of us would like to see your parts layout. I showed it earlier. You missed it. I'm really sorry. Uh, now it's not interesting because the uh, the parts layout on, or they're all gone I'm down to the la the very last part uh, but just to show you what I did before is I took the uh, the camera uh, you missed it at the beginning of the screen and I rotated it around my game room there's Aerosmith to the game room carpet and now all that's there is the the Nintendo the Super Nintendo the arcade sticks for the uh, this is the uh, the little TV bench that I made. The details to be seen on uh, abpinball.com. A Capcom Big Blue inspired uh, JAMA uh, TV bench. So it's got a CRT TV on top, and uh, it holds uh, JAMA arcade boards uh, inside it with built-in sound system. Uh, but anyway, yeah. So you you missed that. The parts were all kind of laid out on the floor um, with all of the hardware corresponding to uh, to each part side by side. That's kind of my system. Uh, it ruins the room the whole time I'm doing this because you, you can't walk around without like stepping on a, <laughs> on a ramp or something. Uh, but it's, a, it's, a, it's the system that I've been using and it works. I would love to have a huge shop with big tables where I can lay everything out and label everything, etc. But uh, that's not the case. I'm in a small little uh, room here uh, in our house uh, and I have room for five games. 
Or four games and tripods, which is a situation uh, we're in now. I, uh, I had an Iron Maiden, uh, which I sold, and uh, just, you know, to have both the money and the space for, for something new, I'm ready to, uh, if there's a Led Zeppelin or anything like that coming along down the line, uh, I would love to get that. And so I've sold the game in preparation. Uh, but in the meantime, it means I have room for these uh, tripods. So. Uh, I'm gonna, when I do get five games in here, I can no longer fit these tripods, so I'm gonna have to figure something out. I'll probably try to do uh, one of those streaming rigs, which is this big kind of frame thing that just goes around the machine. Um, they're, they're, they're very narrow, um, and so hopefully then I can uh, you know, fit five games and do some streaming in here. All right, last part, the last part. We're down to the wire, the last part. The last part is a plastic protector for the ramp. And it's gotta go like that. Um, this is a part that probably just prevents the ball from flying off that wire form, if I were to guess. I don't know exactly, but that's uh, If you see a clear plastic on top of a ramp and you're like, what the heck is that for? That's, that doesn't seem like it's needed for the game to work. You're probably right, but uh, you know, you'll probably end up in a situation where the ball is gonna do things it shouldn't. Uh, sometimes you have a, a clear plastic just sitting on top of a ramp to prevent the ball from jumping off the ramp if it has too much speed. Uh, other times you'll have a bunch of clear plastics or, or even plastics with art on them and you're like, what is that for? Is that a decoration? Like it looks neat, but it doesn't seem needed. Or a weird post. It'll just be a post with nothing on it, no rubber, no nothing. Uh, those are to prevent ball traps. So a ball trap is anywhere the ball can come to rest and be stuck. And on pinball machines, you have to be able to drop the ball, like almost anywhere, at any point the entire game, you have to be able to drop the ball and have it not be stuck. Because otherwise, during the course of play, the ball will get airborne, you'll get a really rapid shot, it'll go flying in the air, and wherever it could get stuck, it will get stuck. And so uh, funny, pla funny looking plastics that, that don't seem to have a purpose or funny posts, etc. Those are anti-ball traps to, to, to basically prevent the ball from getting stuck if it goes anywhere near there. Um, this guy here though is almost certainly to prevent the ball from flying off the ramp. And it is the very last part. We're so close to the end. The very last part in our reassembly tonight. And... Uh, and then we will see if it still works. We'll flip the magic on off switch and, uh, and try to fire it up. And uh, hopefully I didn't uh, short any wires or do anything funny like that. I'm hearing some uh, ice machine <laughs> noises from, uh, from outside the room. I'm telling you, it was hot in San Jose today. Uh, I think uh, I think someone in the house is, is getting some ice. I don't know if you heard that or not, or if the, the music uh, is, is just drowning that out, that out. All right, let's do one final test. That was the last part. So we're good to go. We're just gonna make sure everything is tied down. Uh, I, you know, what I noticed is there were zip ties holding down the wires for these lamps. I cut them. Uh, you, ha you have to cut them. Uh, and so now, the finishing touch. I will reinstall brand new zip ties. And I don't have fancy colored ones. There were some some purple zip ties, believe it or not. Oh, no, no, no. The finishing touch is going to be the flipper rubbers. Uh, the finishing touch is going to be the flipper rubbers. We talked about that in the beginning. But anyway, yeah, uh, I don't know where the previous owner got purple zip ties, but they, they certainly tie in well to the game. Uh, black is a, maybe a little bit more invisible. Like, you don't want to draw attention to a zip tie. So although the purple works well with the colors of the game, uh, I don't know if, if, if I'm, I think I'm happy just keeping keeping them black because they uh, they did. It's like the NVU4 prod. It's like Stage Crew, right? They they don't wear purple. Stage Crew wear black to, to hopefully <laughs> not be visible if the if the camera pans around and you're like there's this person like hooking up a cable to a guitar or whatever. They're they're dressed in black typically. So I'm going to make my zip ties black for the same reason. Uh, okay, so now we just have the flipper rubbers, oh, like and our choices tonight, I mean, uh, you internet have the power to influence this color choice, so we can go with blue. I have some black ones. Black is boring, but I'm not going to do black. I'm going to put them there so you can see what they look like. 
Uh, let's see if we can zoom in so you can get a good view of those colors. All right, so we've got black, we've got blue. Oops, and see, this is where my tripod is not cooperating. And the last choice, red. And what's on there now is uh, purple. I don't have purple, so purple is going to come off. What do you guys think? Is, uh, is there a particular color that would work well? I'm definitely thinking red or blue. The game has all these colors on it, so like even black, like you can't really go wrong, uh, I, uh, I, th I think, but uh, um, yeah, if, if no one has any opinions, I think I'm gonna go blue and we will then move to powering on the game. All right. Let's see here, let's get rid of these. What were these? They are Titans. Yeah, so the previous owner definitely put Titans. You can see the, the letters right on them. Um, and yeah, you can see the uh, the uh, flippers there on the, uh, the uh, top left camera. And they get rid of those. Titans wear super well too. They're just great. Like they're, it's such a fantastic product. I really love Titans. And uh, another benefit over uh, regular rubber is they don't degrade they don't, uh, like, natural rubber dries out and they start falling to bits and they, they just create a whole mess through the game uh, the longer they're on there. Uh, the Titans that, at least in my experience, do not uh, have a tendency to do that. And so they keep your, not only do they look great, but they keep your game cleaner too. Now I'm doing this from the opposite angle that I would normally be doing it because I can't stand on the other side of the game. Let's see if I can pull this off. Yeah, it's a little tough doing it in reverse. The pains I go through to stream for you guys, I hope you're, <laughs> I hope you're appreciating it. It wasn't that hard. I'm just joking. It wasn't that hard. Alrighty, so unless anyone can spot anything, I think we're done, people. We've got the game all back together again. Yay! There's no parts. Look, I'm gonna show you. I'm gonna show you. There's. Uh, let me go back to my camera view. One last time, swinging around to the parts. Look at that, big empty floor. There's nothing there. That's because we're done. We've got, uh, you. that's when you know when you're done. There's there's no parts left. Uh, otherwise, I would have no idea, of course. <laughs> Alrighty, let's power it on. Well, first I'm gonna drop it in the cabinet. All right, so this is gonna be slightly tricky. I'm going to do my best to keep the game. So the game is in service position now. Uh, in order to get it back in the machine, it's going to have to move quite a bit, which is going to take the um, it's going to take the uh, the game out of the frame of the camera. But I promise I will readjust it as I go. Uh, learned a lot, got to run. I envy you for prod. I've seen your games; they're super clean. I don't buy it for you. Didn't learn anything. I don't buy it for a second. You know exactly how to do all this stuff. Your games are cleaner than mine, I think. So I'm gonna lift this back there, get it over that little hump. And we will get the game into the cabinet. All right. So that drops in there. Oh, you know one thing I could do too is give it new balls. Yeah, let's do that. Before I get it out here, I'm just gonna pop all the balls out. When your game is all nice and clean, it's nice to give it fresh new balls. So this, these, these balls are definitely a little worn. Uh, ever slightly rusty and they have pits in them and uh, I have some brand new clean ones here super shiny awesome balls from the Ball Baron yes I think that's his name an online store that specializes in, uh, in selling ball bearings and he has uh, pinball ones exactly the correct size and they're really really nice uh, highly recommend getting yours from there so now we can put those back in the whoops that's going to go the wrong way. Let's put them down into the ball trough. Four balls. And put this thing away. All right. So let's turn it on. Turn on the room, that is. And uh, I'm going to now readjust the camera. So we can take a look at it all nice and clean. Alrighty, that's looking good. Let's turn the uh, the room lights, uh, my work lamp, out. 
Alright. And yeah, that's looking mighty good to me. I am happy with that. Nice, it was looking so clean and uh, and vibrant. Wow, yeah, it looks great on camera. I hope, uh, I don't know how well that's coming uh, through the internet, but uh, uh, if I can uh, just, yeah, we're maximum zoomed out. Alrighty, time to go back to the chat. But uh, yeah, that's it for tonight, I think. Uh, we, we've got the game back together, done. Uh, the glass is still off, and uh, I'm going to do some play testing probably with the glass off just to make sure it's correct. That's going to be super loud. I don't want to shatter your ears. Uh, and so for now, we're going to leave it at that. Uh, but worry not, on Thursday, I will be back. And uh, actually, now that the game is all done, um, I will be playing it. And uh, you'll get to see... Uh, I wonder if you'll be able to spot the difference between uh, the last stream and this one, uh, you know, before and after. Now that the game is clean and it's been waxed, uh, it should be playing super fast. There's a huge difference uh, between how a dirty game and a, uh, a clean game plays. So, uh, yeah, that's it for tonight. Uh, thank you, everyone. Let's see if anyone else is, uh, is playing pinball. Don't Panic Flip is playing. Uh, so I'm going to send you off to uh, Don't Panic Flim, Flip. Um, you can let him know that I finished uh, Metallica and uh, that it's ready um, for next time. And we were chatting about it last night on his stream. So uh, there you go. Off to Don't Panic Clip. He's a good guy. And uh, he, what is he playing tonight? He's playing Family Guy, it looks like. So yeah, thank you very much, everyone. Have a good night.